I'm Dr. Cynthia Bulick, Director of the University of North Carolina Center of Excellence for Eating Disorders. I am Dr. Zeynep Yilmaz, Postdoctoral Research Fellow at the University of North Carolina. And I'm Dr. Andrew Hardaway, Postdoctoral Research Fellow at the University of North Carolina. Eating disorders are serious mental illnesses that affect millions of women, men, boys, and girls worldwide. We discussed the three main eating disorders in our review, anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. Anorexia nervosa is characterized by low body weight, persistent restriction of food intake, an intense fear of gaining weight or persistent behaviors that interfere with weight gain, and either distorted body image, undue influence of shape or weight on self-evaluation, or persistent lack of recognition of the seriousness of the low body weight. Anorexia nervosa has the highest mortality rate of all psychiatric disorders. Our treatments for anorexia, especially in adults, are suboptimal, in part because we understand very little about the underlying biology of the disorder. Bulimia nervosa is characterized by recurrent episodes of binge eating, consuming in a discrete period of time an amount of food that is definitely larger than what most individuals would eat in a similar period of time under similar circumstances, accompanied by a sense of loss of control over eating and compensatory behaviors such as self-induced vomiting, laxative or diuretic abuse, fasting outside of binge episodes, and excessive driven exercise. Although fairly effective treatments are available for bulimia, many individuals never seek treatment. Binge eating disorder, or BED, the most common eating disorder, is marked by recurrent episodes of binge eating accompanied by a sense of loss of control over eating in the absence of recurrent inappropriate compensatory behaviors. Other characteristics of BED include distress about the binge eating, eating alone during a binge episode because of embarrassment about overconsumption, and feelings of guilt or shame after a binge episode. As the newest official eating disorder, many individuals with BED are unaware that it is a treatable disorder. All eating disorders are serious psychiatric conditions influenced by biological, psychological, and sociocultural factors. Family and twin studies over the past decade have shown that eating disorders run in families and that genetic factors are operative in the observed familial aggregation. The field is now advancing this knowledge by working toward identifying specific genes that contribute to these conditions and utilizing animal models of eating disorder phenotypes to define the underlying biology of these pernicious illnesses. The history of the study of genetic factors contributing to eating disorders has followed the path of other psychiatric disorders. Linkage studies, which aim to identify genomic regions that have an increased likelihood of containing genes associated with a disorder or trait, yielded a few positive findings, but did not lead to follow-through on the identification of specific contributing genes. A decade of candidate gene association studies ensued, involving specific hypotheses based on biological function. However, no reliably replicated results emerged that were specific to the pathology of any of the eating disorders. Since then, eating disorders genetics has entered the Genome-Wide Association Study, or GWAS era, examining millions of genetic variants at once, and this method has proven to be fruitful in gene discovery in other psychiatric disorders. A few small genome-wide association studies in anorexia have yielded promising preliminary findings, and larger-scale efforts are now underway. Other preliminary studies have focused on rare genetic variants using high-throughput sequencing, often in families with multiple affected individuals. Studies using GWAS methodology and high-throughput sequencing in larger numbers of eating disorder cases present researchers with significant opportunity for making important discoveries about the biology of these conditions. Over the past 20 years, there has been substantial progress in using laboratory animals to model eating disorders. These studies have revealed a complex network of genes functioning within discrete brain circuits. Scientists have used modern genetic methods to specifically delete certain genes and rodents to study their effects on metabolism and feeding. These have included a number of genes in brain neurotransmitter systems and hormones known to regulate appetite and weight. Depending on the targeted gene, these deletions often result in two distinct outcomes, mice that are lean and eat less, or mice that are obese and overeat. Taken together, these preclinical studies hold great promise for the identification of future drug targets relevant to eating disorders. Epigenetics refers broadly to the regulation of gene function without a change in the DNA coding sequence. 
These changes can occur through several mechanisms, one of which is DNA methylation. To date, a number of preliminary studies have been conducted to explore the altered DNA methylation and gene expression in eating disorders. Genome-wide epigenetic studies have the potential to further understanding of the role of elements outside of the DNA coding sequence in eating disorder risk. Significant advances have emerged in our understanding of eating disorders. With the development of more sophisticated laboratory and bioinformatic tools, researchers are now able to make more meaningful connections between genomic variants and complex disorders. Most genetic studies to date have focused on anorexia. More studies are planned to explore the genetics of bulimia nervosa and BED. In the genomic era, large sample sizes in the tens to hundreds of thousands hold the key to identifying common and rare genetic risk variants that contribute to eating disorders.